Hello friends, welcome back. Today we're going to serve JSON on a specific route. Uh, so uh, while an HTML server serves, you guessed it, HTML, an API server serves data. A REST, or Representational State Transfer API, allows data exchange in a simple way without the need for clients to know any detail about the server. The client only needs to know where the resource is, the URL, and the action it wants to perform on it, the verb. The get verb is used when you are fetching some information without modifying anything. These days, the preferred data format for moving information around the web is JSON, J-S-O-N, JavaScript Object Notation. Simply put, JSON is a convenient way to represent a JavaScript object as a string so it can be easily transmitted. Let's create a simple API by creating a route that responds with JSON at the path forward slash JSON. You can do it as usual with app.get method inside the route handler. Use the method res.json passing, passing in an object as an argument. This method closes the request response loop returning the data. Behind the, the scenes, it converts a valid J JavaScript object into a string, then sets the appropriate header to tell the browser that you are serving JSON and sends the data back. A valid object has the usual structure of key data. Data that can be a number, a string, a nested object, or an array. Data can also be a variable or the result of a function call, in which case it will be evaluated before being converted into a string. So serve the object message hello JSON as a response in JSON format to the git request to the JSON route. Then point your browser to your app dash URL forward slash JSON. You should see the message on the screen. So what they're essentially saying here is that if we have forward slash JSON, we should see something pop up here. But right now we're getting nothing. It just says not found. And so that's what we want to change. So let's go to our Atom. Um, it says here, serve a JSON specific route. Okay, so we're going to say, it says that you can use app.get just like regular. So app.get, we're going to say a path. And what's our path? We know we want it to be, right? JSON. And then we're going to pass in a function. Inside the root handler, use the method res.json. So here we're going to use the same similar function request and response here. Function request response. And so we're going to say, we want to say inside the root handler, use the method res.json passing an object as an argument. Okay, so res.json, and we want to pass an, we want to pass, passing an object as an argument. So we're going to pass an object as an argument. There's an object. This method closes the request loop and sends it back. A valid object has a usual structure of key data. So we want to serve the object of message hello. Message. Hello, JSON. Now, if you're doing this on your own, make sure that you use double quotes. Um, that is an easy way to make a mistake here. And um, yeah, you can do it like this. And this is kind of a clean way of writing it. Um, hello, JSON. And then point your browser to the URL. So let's, we can come over here and go npm uh, start, which I'll start our application locally. And then if we go to localhost 3000, this is where our app is. And if we want to say, we can go JSON. And now it passes us this, hello, JSON. So what happens is when we do that, it, we, are, we come to the application, the server starts up. And then when we serve the app, the request of forward slash JSON, the app.get, our local side is requesting this JSON. And then the server responds by running this function and sending a response of JSON or JavaScript object notation with this object in it. And then that uh, is the thing that we need. And so that's great. We have it working locally. We can stop our own local server, but we still don't have it working in production. That's because we haven't sh posted our changes to our website. So if we say get status, um, we see the change there. So I'm just going to go get add. Uh, we can say my app, or we could do a period here. Uh, get commit, uh, add a JSON route with dummy data. And now we say git push Heroku uh, head master. So now we're pushing 
the code from our local machine up to our Heroku app. And so if we see here, we can see that we started on our Heroku server. So somewhere in the Heroku universe, there's a computer that just clicked on and it's saying, okay, we're downloading this information that we just got. And we're, so we're pushing the code from Ian's computer, from the useful com programmer computer up to our um, server farm. And what we're doing now is we're setting it up. And so now that it's got the code, it's um, figured out the application and now it's run, it started the application by saying node server S. And so now if we come over to here and we refresh the page, we should see a JSON element being passed in. So now we can take our production server link and provide it here. Interesting. Let me see here. Command shift I. I'm new looking in here for the console. Um, JSON. Run this test. Okay, so it's not working, but if we run this, if we run this, we get it functioning. So it's, it is working the way that we want it to, it just doesn't seem to be working. Failed to load the resource server. Here it's saying JSON forward slash JSON JSON. So what does that mean? That means that it's, yeah, my guess is that, okay, so this is almost certainly a, uh, testing error because we're getting the right response here, but it looks like free code camps looking in the wrong place for this. Oh, that's what it is. Okay. So in the response, we want to add, instead of saying our solution is here, we don't want to add this specific route to it. We want to just say, this is our project name and then free code camp will add the JSON element to it. And so that's good. Cool. Um, another thing I wanted to make a mention. In Node, almost everybody uses arrow functions, so it doesn't make a lot of sense for us to have these functions. Um, we want to make these arrow functions because it's just a cleaner way of writing these sorts of applications, and everybody who works with Node now uses arrow functions. These work the exact same way, and so, um, yeah. This just cleans up our code a little bit, so I'm going to go get status, get add, get commit, um, change to arrow functions. And then we go git push uh, Heroku head master. And uh, that'll just change that. I don't think that that'll cause any differences in our application. Um, but yeah, this was a little bit tricky because they don't want you to have the forward slash JSON on there. Then point your browser to this. You should see it. They don't make, make a mention that you should not have your forward slash JSON here. Um, I think that's kind of tricky. Uh, but anyways, as you can see, we're pushing our code to the main server now, and it looks like it's up there. And what I'm also going to do is push this to um, our GitHub project. So the GitHub project is where, if you were working with a team, this, they've got a lot of tools that would make it so that you could work together with people and they would be able to see the branch that you're working on. So we want to just say git push to push it to Heroku, or to GitHub. And so, now that we've pushed our code to the production, our local branch and our GitHub branch and our production branch are all the same. And if I refresh the page here, you'll see we've got our console logs and we've got our JSON route and we've got our static assets and we have our uh, index file Git. And so, yeah, that's it for this one. Hope you guys enjoy this one and we'll see you in the next lesson.